students from making the choice to further their education. 23 years of experience as a dentist, a speaker, a mother, a grandmother has confirmed my lifelong belief that after family, there is no greater joy than helping others. And tonight, I've been given, this is a blessing for me because I've been given the opportunity to share some lessons I've learned that I pray will help each of you on your journey toward deeper external connections, getting involved, very, very important that you collaborate and network, but also internal fulfillment, a joy that lasts and doesn't cause a hangover. I vividly remember years ago being in the same seats as, as some of these students, watching some boring speaker wishing they'd hurry up so I could get back to texting and Facebook. Y'all supposed to laugh, you know, too old for that. <laughs> I was just sitting there waiting for it to be over. But if you'll just, just share with me a little bit of time tonight, in between comments, you can update your status as soon as we're done. I'll, I'll try to make this work for a while. This is an opportunity for you. Take advantage of these opportunities. Stop at these tables. Talk to the people. Learn about the resources, the organizations. You can visit with your friends anytime. You won't have access to these people this close every day to answer your questions. You'll want to be involved. You'll want to ask questions now. This was designed with you in mind. I wish they'd had something like this at Baylor when I was there. And it's a priceless bonus on your investment in yourself. That's what you're doing. You're making an investment in yourself. You won't see the return right away, rather like my 401k, but I believe that if you just keep investing in yourself, you will see that it pays off in the future. And I know that you're having visions of a good life. You wouldn't do this. You wouldn't enroll in classes. You wouldn't take the test. You wouldn't study. You wouldn't tell your friends, no, I can't hang if you didn't have visions of a future wonderland. Most of you probably know the story of another student, another student who went to Wonderland. Her name was Alice. You may not know, but that story was written by a minister, Reverend Charles Dodson. You know him as Lewis Carroll. He made up Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in 1865 for a little girl that he knew to amuse her and her siblings. The characters like the Queen of Hearts, the Mad Hatter, and the White Rabbit were based on real people in their lives, in their community. If you don't know the story, and that may be possible, it's okay. It's simply about a little girl whose natural curiosity leads her on an adventure into a completely new environment where she learns some important life lessons from characters unlike anyone she's ever met. Obviously, there are going to be similarities between her make-believe Make believe life and your real ones. For example, in college, in grad school, in life, count on meeting some unusual people, and I use the term loosely, some odd folks. <laughs> Genius but weird professors, nutty roommates, people who believe the world is flat, 50 inches wide, and best viewed on high definition television. <laughs> You can and you should learn something from everyone you meet, even if the lesson is what not to do from that bad manager, from that bad roommate. That is valuable knowledge. That is wisdom as well. And I'm, I'm going to challenge you to relentlessly pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge like it owes you money. It's Christmas Eve and you need to buy your mother a present. Chase knowledge down. Your credit score may rise and fall, but no one can ever take your intellect. They cannot devalue that. And even if you fail, even if you try and fail and we fall down, in the words of Henry Ford of Ford Motor Company, even failure allows you to more intelligently begin again. So come, let us briefly explore three lessons from Alice's adventures in Wonderland. First is the importance of having clear goals at all times. I know you've heard a lot about goal setting, maybe been through exercises on goal setting, where well, we're going to talk about it some more because we need to reinforce the importance of knowing where you're headed. For example, Alice. Alice 
ask a Cheshire cat up a tree for directions. She asked a cat in a tree, would you tell me please which way I ought to go? That's what happens in the story. Now personally, I find it curious that she asked a cat in a tree for help. Don't ask someone up a tree on academic probation <laughs> in jail or OMG ROFL for guidance unless that's where you want to go. The cat responds, that depends a good deal on where you want to go. That's a very wise answer. And Alice says, much to my surprise, Alice says, I don't much care where. And the cat says, then it doesn't much matter which way you go. You need a plan. Not only for your career, you need a plan for your health. You need a plan for your family. You need a plan for your career. You need to know what you want to accomplish, not just your 10-year goals, your 7-year goal, your 5-year, 3-year. You need to know what you're going to do tomorrow. You need a plan for a week from now. You need a plan for a month from now. The way you eat an elephant is a bite at a time, small steps toward your future goals. You need purpose. If you don't have goals, if you don't have goals, commercial television and reality programs with Snooky in them will provide one for you. <laughs> There's a reason that million of want, millions of wannabe rude boys are wearing $200 J's on misguided feet and eating two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun while they wave their hands in the air and they're shorty, riding dirty, waves a body like a cyclone. <laughs> Granted, that is a life plan of sorts, but it's a plan to be in debt and have diet-related high cholesterol. <laughs> if you want paper in your pockets, I suggest you begin with some frame paper on the wall. A certification, a degree, a skill set. Then you get the check. I've lost half of the adults. They may not be impressed anymore. They might not think I have a doctorate, but I do have other erudite discourses with philosophical meandering, if that's what you like. <laughs> However, tonight, for my own selfish reason, I'm trying to connect with the students. I'm trying to connect with our corporate and community leaders, our future trustees, our future doctors and VPs for a selfish reason, because if you're not prepared for the pitfalls of leadership in the future, you may make bad decisions. For example, you may be in Congress discussing Medicare Part B about the time I need a wheelchair. <laughs> I want high quality. <laughs> I want it automated. I want some rims. <laughs> I need you to be able to assess and evaluate, use the critical thinking skills and understand the value of my wisdom. Of course, you can modify your plans. And circumstances change. For example, I had planned to go home after work today. I have a new position with the Texas Medical Foundation as a dental director, and I work north. I live south. I had planned to go home and change in the something real, you know, bougie speaker looking. <laughs> I had planned to go home and polish my toenails. <laughs> But I would have been late, and my commitments are important to me. So I had some polish in the car. I polished the three toes you can see. Beware, hear me now, beware of little people with big problems. 
As you go about selecting new friends in your new life, pay attention to the conversation of the people around you. Sometimes you have to cut some people loose. In the beginning of the tale, Alice in Wonderland, she chooses to follow a rabbit that scurries by her. Let me define scurries, rushes, hurries, walks very quickly by her. Moreover, the rabbit, the rabbit in a suit, was looking at his pocket watch crying, oh dear, oh dear, I shall be too late. Isn't it strange that Alice followed a talking rabbit that was running late down a hole? Personally, I tried to avoid humans wearing hockey masks and carrying sharp objects. <laughs> Following small talking mammals is out of the question. Because the rabbit's conversation clearly indicated he's in trouble. He's running late. He didn't ask her to follow him. That's groupie mentality when you're just following along behind people. You don't know where they're going. And you don't know where you're going. And he's obviously not calling the shots wherever he's going. That's not a good leader. Again, be careful who you follow and where you follow them. My fellow alum of Baylor University, the university, Harvard is nice, but Baylor <laughs> University, <laughs> and CEO of the Houston Astros, multimillionaire, maybe a billionaire, Drayton McLean says, walk with elephants. Very simple, very profound statement, meaning when we're trying to do something big, we need help from big people. We need help from strong mentors. We need help from wise people, people who challenge us, people who make us mad, people who tell us A minus, C minus, you're not quite there yet. Those are the type of people that will develop you and make you better because they have strength of the mind. Seek to make alliances, connect with successful people, those people who intimidate you. Those are the very people you need to spend time with. Those people you call bougie, she thinks she's all this and that. Find out why. Yes. Self-esteem comes from the inside. Find out why. That's who you need to be with, not talking about. That's who you need to roll with. I know it's scary to approach strangers, particularly people who seem to be very successful, but by being with them, it increases the chances that you'll rise to their level. You'll play the game better if your opponent is better than you or your teammate. Otherwise, you'll find yourself following someone into a dark, dangerous hole. I understand being afraid. When I went to Baylor, there were only 100 black students there out of 10,000 students. That's 1%. And when I realized that everyone graduated with a 4.0, like Jeffrey and I, there were five of us, and everyone was a class officer, a student body president, like me. And everyone seemed to be rich, but me. That was scary. I became anxious because I've never been an average anything. Even if I'm bad, I'm good at being bad. <laughs> I have intention when I sleep. My dreams have purpose. <laughs> and suddenly, I wasn't the smartest or the most likely to succeed. I was just another student. Heaven knows I wanted nothing more than to click my payless heels together and go home to my mom. But when fear becomes my greatest enemy, I take a cue from life coach Tony Robbins who says, concentrate on where you want to go not on what you fear. So I work hard, worked hard, I work hard now. <laughs> Boldly asked for help, and I made the improbable possible, despite my fear. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here, yet here I stand. Lesson three, unlike the cruel queen of hearts who settled conflict by ordering executions, and I've come to a point in my life where I can understand that, but it's wrong. <laughs> Try to be fair and ethical because you do reap what you sow. I'm not sure if Wonderland has a declaration of independence, but we do. And when it reads, all men are created equal, it means all, everyone. No one is excluded, 
excluded. That statement at the time it was written was in reference to the then common belief that kings had divine rights and could do anything that they wanted. That's what they meant, but that's not what it means now. Those words, all men are created equal, have evolved, but they have not expired or been amended. In fact, they have greater meaning today, and we must, we must, as we get our education, as we get our wisdom, as we get our material possessions, nothing wrong with wanting nicer things, wanting better things, but you must avoid the royalty mentality of thinking you're a king or a queen, thinking that money, race, a degree, an accent, or the lack of one makes you superior to anyone else. No title entitles you or me to mistreat people, to take things that don't belong to us, to break the law. We cannot earn the right to intentionally do wrong. And believe me, embarrassment is a powerful antidote to arrogance. So consider carefully the consequences of your actions on yourself and on your family. My youngest son got in trouble when he was in the ninth grade, new in high school, and he had to do after school detention for a week. And that first day, I showed up for that science class for after school detention, and that second day I showed up, and that third day I showed up, and he said, Mom, you don't have to come. Why do you keep coming up here? I said, because what you do affects me. And if you go to jail, I'm going to have to come up there and visit you. I'm going to have to get an attorney. I'm going to have to get your bail. If you get ill, I'm going to have to come to the hospital. What happens to you matters to me. We will always be connected. So think about that before you talk in class again and get me in trouble. Think about the effect on your family who sacrificed for you so much. There are lessons to be learned from this story, but ultimately... Your choices each new day. Each new day, there are new mercies. I messed up years ago. I messed up months ago. I messed up weeks ago. But today is a new day. I'm not worried about that. And the people who are worried about that can stay back there and worry about that. Move forward with me. You cannot win the race looking backwards. Watch track and feel. They lean forward. Keep going. Shake them haters off. Keep going. There were people at my high school reunion still talking about stuff Jeff and I did back in the eighth grade. <laughs> I'm like, what else? Get a life. <laughs> As I close, it is not true that you are what you eat. You are what you do. You can blindly follow others or you can Blaze paths where highways never ran. You can sit around whining about what's wrong, or you can take action and do what's right. You can bully your way, execute people, go along doing it your way, or you can include everyone, build networks, build alliances, build collaborations, and do it the best way, the wisest way. The choice is always yours with each new day and knowing what I do about you about my people who are called by his name. I believe you'll not only make the right choice, I believe I predict right this down on 9811. Dr. Mo said you'll make history. God bless you. Deuces. We hope you enjoyed this podcast featuring best-selling author, doctor of dental surgery, and motivational speaker, Monica Dr. Mo Anderson. Educational and entertaining. Dr. Mo Anderson has the right prescription for success. To learn more about Dr. Mo or have her speak to your corporate, civic, or student group, visit her online at drmoeanderson.com or on Twitter at drmoeanderson.